Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut, and in this video what I'm going to be doing is something that a ton of you have requested me to do, and that is to take a look at Gruda, or Grada? I think it's Gruda. Gruda Linux. Now, I like Arch-based systems that ship with KDE, which this is one of those, which is why a lot of you guys suggested I take a look at it. And that is exactly what I'm going to be doing today. And I've never installed this. I've This is the first time I'm actually visiting the homepage. So let's just go ahead and I'm gonna click download. Uh, under here, please read minimum specs, four gigs of RAM. So if the minimum spec is four gigs of RAM with a recommendation of eight gigs, this must be a uh, moderately resource intensive uh, distribution. Gruta Gruta is the login, downloads, dragonized. I think this is the one that you guys told me to take a look at. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a direct download of this. And uh, right once it is done, I will be popping it into VirtualBox and checking it out. All right, I loaded up the virtual machine and we're booting into Grita or Grita Linux. Um, I'm not sure how long this is going to take and the resolution might look a little bit stretched, stretched out at first and that's because of the uh, VirtualBox resolutions. All right, we are just about in by the looks of it. First thing I have to say is I absolutely love the icon. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this is what I mean about everything's all stretched out. Um, we're going to fix that real quick. So I'm assuming up here is the menu. So let's go into display. All right, so what I just tried to do is go into the display settings and change the resolution. And to my surprise, I actually resized the window and it seems like the uh, VirtualBox drivers are already installed and that's a very, very uncommon. So I was able just to resize it and it automatically synced up the resolution in VirtualBox and everything's looking pretty good so far. So I'm really liking the fact that they include those uh, VirtualBox guest services drivers. Um, so skipping that, the actual look of it, it is beautiful. I forgot the exact name of this theme. So we can go actually figure that out in our system settings because um, this is a KDE environment, so it's pretty easy to get around. And it looks like the background automatically has a blur effect when you open up windows. So that's really cool. And ignore this kind of laggy uh, window movement. Like I said, VirtualBox, it's going to do stuff like that. But the global theme, let's see if it's the one I'm thinking of. Yep. Yep, that is the one, the uh, sweet KDE theme, and this is the Sweetified, so that's probably a little custom one that they've made. But I've used this theme in Manjaro in the past, and it's absolutely beautiful, kind of neon theme. I'm not much a fan of the icons, but everything else, the buttons and all that, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and close out these settings and check out some of the things that comes with this little welcome. Hold on, I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm just checking out this blurry background, so let's minimize this real quick. That That is super cool. So I'm going to open this back up, or is it down here? Okay, so they want you to use this little, uh, the application bar down there. I, the blur effect for the background by default is super cool. I can see why it needs the system resources that it does. The creating a light distribution or a, yeah, a light Linux distribution is not the goal for uh Gruda. Um, so Gruda, we have the assistant, settings manager, gamer, uh, network assistant, boot options, and repair. So it looks like they have a good suite of utilities that comes with this. Let's open up Gruda assistant and see what we get here. So this is some of the settings and we can enable and disable different services and uh, devices, utilities. You can pick what firewall service you use. So this is really, really cool. You can just check boxes and it seems like it would automatically install like VirtualBox, the Vert Manager. Uh, they have the uh, GStreamer Codex installed. So it has a lot of different tools. You have uh, ad blocking stuff in here, uh, right click, long press for emulation. There's a lot of good stuff going on here. They have the refresh minor list, so this is nice. This is just maintenance stuff. Uh, system update, so it automatically runs the Pac-Man uh, system update command. Remove orphans. So uh, it's looking like I have a video on Manjaro. The, um, I have two different ones, five and 10 things to do after install. And a lot of these right here in the assistant is some of the stuff in that video. So they make it really, really easy, such as removing orphans, actually updating mirror lists. 
This is probably the first half of that entire video that this little assistant gives you. So that's really, really nice. Um, we're gonna close this out and go back in here. Oh, it opened up for us. So the settings manager, let's see what they give us here. Um, okay, so this looks a lot like, this basically is the Manjaro settings manager. So I'm curious to whether or not if this is just a custom a, uh, distribution based on Manjaro. So kind of like how uh, Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu and Ubuntu is based on Debian. Maybe Manjaro's based on Arch and then this is based on Manjaro, but that is speculation. I am not sure. Just based on this uh, right here, it looks like it's ripped off from the Manjaro system settings or settings manager. So here you'd have the stuff you'd expect, kernel, language packs, user accounts, hardware configuration, stuff like that. Quit out of there and it opens this up. That's really cool. Now the Grita Gamer, let's see what this gives you here. All right. Okay, so you have all the different launchers you could go ahead and install, including Steam and Lutris, which are the two that I would recommend you use. Uh, you have Wine, but they have a lot of different tools and launchers and all kinds of things that you could get in here, including uh, Steam, well not Steam, but Steam Link for Twitch, uh, Open RGB, which is really nice. That works very well with my system. Emulators. There's a lot in this distribution of Linux. They have a lot of different tools and options. And I don't think any of these are already installed. They just give you the option to easily install it. So for example, this is a PlayStation 2 emulator. This looks like a Switch emulator, Sega emulator. The, they give you a lot of different options. Just, just in this little welcome menu, you have so much power. Um, network assistant, we're not gonna look in there. Um, boot options, let's see what we have here. Uh, password. Uh, I think the password was just Grita, right? So, or Grota, or probably saying it wrong throughout this entire video. See if that opens up with that password, which it does. So, the menu timeout. Okay, so this is kind of the uh, bootloader options. So, menu timeout, boot to. Um, there's no options right here. Probably need to install it, but that might be like um, what desktop environment you want to go into or something like that. You could change your bootloader background here. You can add themes, enable theme. Okay, okay, so and then you have the uh, options here. Uh, silent grub, hush grub, regular grub. Yeah, so these are grub settings, that's awesome. Usually you'd have to go into a configuration file and open it in a text editor and play with those settings there. Uh, extras, partition manager. Um, let's see if they use either G parted or yeah, KDE partition manager. That's kind of what I expected being that this is a KDE desktop environment. Uh, I'm just trying to close this out. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna close this out. There's the install button here. I'm not gonna do that quite yet. I'm gonna see what software this comes with. So going into the menu here and going over to applications, let's see what they give you out of the gate. So we have the QT Assistant and Designer, that's part of uh, KDE stuff. Let's see, Icon Browser, Graphics, uh, Image Viewers, Document Viewers. Uh, under Internet, uh, we have a few VNC, SSH, KDE Connect. So it's actually not looking like they have too many preloaded applications. They just give you the option to go through and install a bunch of different things. Uh, VLC and Pulse Audio. Office. So they don't even have an Office suite, at least not on the live disk or built into the system automatically. Under, setting, <clears throat> under settings, we have add remove software. So I'm assuming if my previous um, guess was true, this is probably PAMAC, uh, which I believe is a Manjaro thing. Yeah, this looks a lot like PAMAC here. Let's go uh, about PAMAC. Yeah, so it looks like they're borrowing a lot of things from Manjaro in here. So this is a very, very pretty version of Manjaro with a lot of extra utilities and tools. So that was settings under system. We have a terminal emulator, a Dolphin file manager, the Grita assistant, which we had open. Grid of Gamer, so they their main thing is they added a lot of system tools that you could go through. So that might be really, really good for somebody who's new. They include a time shift, that's very good. 
um, somebody who's new and just wants to easily get up and going in like a Lutris game, this might be a wonderful option. And then last but not least, under Utilities, they have Arc, Emoji Selector, Kate, which is the KDE text editor, KCalc, uh, Lati Doc, so that's what doc they're using down below there, Spectacle, a lot of KDE stuff that you'd expect with a few extras. Um, yeah, so they, they gave you a good amount of stuff to start out with. It's not too crazy preloaded. Uh, for example, I'm running Arco Linux on my main machine, and that actually came with a lot of stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and run through the installer here. Uh, doesn't look like they're going to have the uh, same type of options as Arco Linux when it comes to selecting what programs to kind of pre-install during the installation. But if we go ahead and run through here, this is looking like the basic installer that you'd expect. English, English, partitions, erase this entire disk, uh, no swap, that's fine. Users, and use same password for the administrator account. Next, and then we have a summary here of what's going on. Uh, we'll hit install, install now. And that's all there is to it. So the installation process is uh, really simple compared to Arco, which was the last uh, video like this that I did where they had a huge amount of options when it comes to what applications you want to install during the installation process. Grid doesn't look like it has nearly as much software, but the tools, the tools are unbelievable for what it offers you. Uh, down here we have our system settings, system monitor, Firefox, some emulators, and that welcome. Uh, I'm going to wait for this to install real quick and jump back in to see if there's any major differences. But so far I am very, very impressed with this Linux distribution. Alright, the installation should be just about done. I'm pretty sure it's been a while. Um, this seems to be the login screen, so this is absolutely beautiful. Instead of off to the middle, it's off to the side over here. You have your icon, you can switch your users. Everything is fine and dandy, so let's type in Greta, Greta, whatever, enter. Log on in, and we are all done with the installation process. So I'm going to go ahead and restart now, and we will be back, and I will boot into the actual installed version of this. All right, we are booting in. So this is going to be our actual final install. Let's get rid of that. And drum roll. Brrr. Okay, so here is my user. So it's not off to the side like it was on the live disk. There's probably an option to go ahead and change that. It looks like we could boot into a guest profile as well. So that is a super handy feature. So I'm going to type in my password there. All right, and we are in. So this, we already went through all of this. Um, I just wanted to check and see if there were any noticeable differences between the live disk and what is installed. So quick little scan through. It looks like it's going to be about the same. Let's see if there's any office applications. Nope. So you need to go through and go ahead and get all your own software. If I go up here, let's see if it's the same kind of uh, layout when it comes to editing this stuff. And it looks like they actually use the latte thing as the actual panel and the thing down here. So it's not using the uh, KDE stuff. So that's interesting that they went with this over the, uh, the built-in KDE stuff. So we'll go to panel. Actually, no, dock. If we edit the dock. Okay, so that changes it up there. All right, I'm just kind of playing around at this point. So one thing we're actually going to do before we go ahead and wrap up is jump over here back to their website. You saw originally the only uh, section I looked at was to download their Dragonized. But if I go ahead right here, click download, we saw the stuff that we saw before with their recommended specs and minimum specs. You have your Dragonized version here, which includes their Sweetified Plasma theme and uh, Fish as the default shell. And if we scroll down, we have their uh, KDE, their non-Dragonized version. But then, if you don't like KDE, you can have the options for an XFCE, which we can see here, it includes all the tools, like the, um, the gamer tools, so you can easily install Lutris and Steam and all that fun stuff. As well as GNOME, they have the LXQT, uh, Cinnamon, Mate or May, uh, Wayfair, BSP Window Manager, uh, i3, Deepin, uh, UKUI. So they have a lot of different options to choose from. Um, if you go up here, you have about so you can see who they are and who the team is that develops this. 
And then if you go up, they actually have a form, which seems to be fairly active. There's a lot of good information, uh, issues and assistance, the community feedback, and a lot of different stuff. So you're not really left in the dark when it comes to actually using this Linux distribution. So overall, I am absolutely impressed with this Arch-based distribution. I'm a major KDE fan, as I've said a couple times. So the fact that they use KDE and they kind of tweak it a little bit, theme it, make it their own, and then add a whole bunch of extra tools to make the whole Linux experience easier is absolutely awesome. And I could be wrong, but it does look like they're borrowing quite a few things from Manjaro which I love Manjaro, and that's awesome that they would use the already perfected tools from that distribution. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment down below and tell me what you think of it. I know a lot of you guys have suggested that I try this out, and if you're one of those that suggested it, thank you, this is awesome. If you did like this video, be sure to smash the like button. If you hated it, dislike it, let me know down below why you disliked it. Um, if I missed something, if I was inaccurate in any way, but ultimately this is a first impression, so this is what I'm getting from it. But also, all my videos are on library. I do have a Patreon if you would like to support my content that way. Uh, links to everything will be in the description, including a Discord server. Please jump in and join that. I hope you have a great day, and goodbye.